Aziza. A land where each sunrise brings a unique charm. From the serene humble sea, with its simple stunning sceneries. A home to one of the best fishermen communities. They are the Joe people, see no mats. Settling on the coast, immersing themselves in new nature. Connecting the foreign dry land and the rich familiar blue sea. A land where people, nature, culture intertwined. Where melodies and rhythms were serenaded to Pio their symbol of unity and prosperity, with traditions inherited from previous generations. They gracefully thank their ancestors for good harvest. Surrounded by stunning geography, rolling hills and cliffs, breathtaking savanna greeting visitor at the gate. Below thousands of stars, their parents and their parents taught them the traditional fight of Etu, where brave, courageous men spill drops of blood, symbolizing prosperity, to only then continue living harmoniously. Tropical landscape came with the rainy season, where rituals are held, asking ancestors for good crop the following year. The flatlands are filled with people plowing their land, presenting rice fields spanning as far as the eye can see. Salt fields optimizing the rich sea. Producing high quality salt. Agriculture adapts slowly and steadily. As the seasonal dry land continues giving life to flora and fauna. Caves which once hit Japanese armies. Are being reminders of a worse a time. The luring myths and tales of the natural wonders, from balancing megliths beneath the dense canopy, to hot water springs. This is the hidden paradise, spoiled with the abundant warmth of nature, of people, in harmony. South Essisa. The vast majestic savanna, gently molds the texture of nature. All the way from the peaks, and down to the valleys. Enriches the thrilling sensation, of trekking in the wild, through forest, and steep cliff towards the Ngabatata, waterfall. From this water spring and others around it, flow streams of clear water which holds a big part in helping tradition to sustain. This is a come of age ritual for boys, to become men. The sanctification in the valley's river, is the first phase of this series of ritual. It is a verification or acknowledgement by custom, that, a man is ready to customarily speak and can be said, is a knight for the community. <laughs> this symbol of knighthood, is proven during hunts in the forest. Things are done before the planting season to search for food and eliminate pests for the coming planting season.
people of South Essesa live communally in authentic traditional villages with local wisdom preserved amongst and inside traditional architecture. They reside humbly and harmoniously. Children create their own creative games and play together cheerfully. A simple kind of happiness. Until a certain age comes along, and the girls must go through a customary come of age ceremony, performed by getting their teeth chiseled with a rock. All the other tools are also very traditional. The adult women have their own way of preserving their traditions. They produce hand woven textiles, and the pounding sounds of the weaving echoes throughout the villages. These fabrics are worn on a daily basis, and also on traditional custom ceremonies, some of which are traditional dances performed in the middle of the village. Ancestral traditions and cultural heritage are well maintained and reflected through Echu. Echu, the traditional boxing, act as a symbol of gratitude of the previous crop. It is performed in the middle of the village. People believe that blood spilt from the boxing reflects fertility of the land. This is the perfect combination of culture and nature. Introducing Echu, the traditional boxing of Nagakyo. Using Kepo, traditional boxing gloves, made of thatch, and accompanied by traditional music, singing and dancing. Echu is held at the center of the village. Various villages gather annually to watch and celebrate the festivities of Echu. The blood spilled symbolizes fertility. Nagakyo is home to a majestic active volcano, Mount Abu Lobo. During the last eruption, Massive amount of black rocks were formed on the slope of the mountain and defined its vast three kilometers land escape. Hundreds of years ago, this place was known as the hiding place of Epigogo, the hobbit living on the base of Ibulobo mountain. This story remains a legend until now. This was the traditional village of Rua tribe. The ruins of old torn houses are seen amongst a landscape of well-arranged rocks. It is believed that the symbol of unity, or Pio, of the Rua tribe was once a type of yam called Koto, which suddenly transformed into stone, hence named Pia Koto, only to be seen, not to be touched. Apart from mystic and magic, Nagakyo holds many tales of traditions well kept on every traditional ceremonies. Moki is an essential drink. A local spirit made of tapped sugar palm water, cooked with wood fire and distilled with bamboo, the traditional way. Sold along with local food local products, livestock and also traditionally weaved fabric and garments in the traditional daily market. On Wednesdays the market transforms into a gathering space of people from varying places. 
All these activities are done under the shadows of the mighty Ibulopo. The magnificent mountain provides a challenging and thrilling hiking route. The hike to the top goes through dense trees and extreme rocky walls. On its peak with the height of 2,124 meters above sea level, hides a cave and an ever-stirring crater continuously expelling volcanic gas. This is where we are. On the highest point of Nagegio. Kyo Tenga, the glorious creation of the Almighty. Spanning from mountains, valleys, to the sea, such a picturesque painting of nature. Layers of mountains providing springs of water, nourishing the land. Melodious singing of the forest is just one of the many reasons to preserve it. The life of the people begins here, a place inherited from their ancestors with an abundance of cultural artifacts as symbols of unity and tradition. Living peacefully with simplicity, honesty, happiness and contentment. Trained by nature, producing extraordinary creativity. In the mountains people farm. On the coasts people fish. Sufficiently taking the bounty of nature. Using traditional ways, maintaining nature sustainability. To admire from such intimate distance, to taste the sense of adventure by immersing yourself in the serene land, the humble valleys, and the challenging yet rewarding majestic Kyotenga Mountains, one of the best trekking routes to the villages upon the hills. Guests are greeted by traditional welcoming dances, songs and proses serenaded together along with joyful dancing. Shrouded by traditional Kyotenga garments, made by the weaving of the village women. Under a canopy of stars. Surrounded by music played joyfully. Dandak dance, is performed as a form of thanksgiving of the bountiful harvest. A one-of-a-kind rhythm, with the poundings of their feet, in harmony with the music is followed with the swaying, of their arms. Traditional houses lined to form a circular arrangement, with the center of the village becoming the social gathering point. An original of Kyotenga. Dotu is a traditional musical instrument made of bamboo played together on certain ceremonies. Dodo, along with their culture, are continuously passed on from one generation to the other with local wisdom embedded to always preserve nature. These are the faces of the next generation to preserve and continue the traditions and culture of Kyotenga. The wise and humble Kyotenga. Among's rainforest-covered hills, on the fertile slope, of Ibulobo Mountain. Lives, a lush district, with the name of Mapongo. Where green is the dominant color, and once in a while yellowing beads decorate, and ignite the festivities in the land. Those priceless beads symbolizes the hard work of the farmers. From the moment when attentive and disciplined hands planted the paddy, until the moments when they harmoniously work in mutual cooperation alternately. These dense green sceneries are then bordered by the stunning coastline of Anna Beach, which is humbled with life from the deep blue. This coast enacts as a gateway for fishermen to depart each morning to gather nature's bounty amongst the waves and ripples.
using traditional boats and traditional fishing techniques. They are maintaining the sustainability and balance of the ecosystem. They also apply a concept of taking sufficiently from nature to survive. In the valleys of green hills, communal living is still embedded and visible in the centrical village layout. This form represents the lifestyle of the people, which is based on mutual cooperation, acceptance, openness and sharing. A welcoming smile is tucked in every corner of the village. Various produce are plentiful throughout time. Each year, people of these slopes rely on cloves as the main commodity. The cloves are harvested using traditional methods, by climbing the trees with bamboo ladders. And then, the cloves are sun-dried during warm mornings, in the middle of the village. Other commodities with great longevity, also strive alongside each other. To live side by side in nature, is such a priceless value. Fertile ground yields, abundance of crops with high quality. Those produce, are then processed, traditionally, and from those kitchen, are generated unique, and healthy local cuisines, ensuring quality of life. This is the land of calm beauty, the lively land, the life-giving land. Seeping slowly, through the cracks, of the valleys in South Nagakio, heard from a distance, is the unique sounds of traditional music. Echoing from the savannah to the forest, that is, our traditional music. Humbly greeted by the blowing sea, and mountain winds, and also by the unique dance, of southern Nagakyo's coastal area, complete with smiles and hospitality. Welcome to this small haven, the Gate of Nagakyo. Communal areas in the middle of the village, enacts as the meeting point for all of the people. Rows of villages line up, by the side of the coast, with fishermen's boats stocked on the beach. Farming and fishing became the main source, of livelihood of the majority. Along the sand and stones of the South Beach, coconut trees sway receiving everyone who comes. The crashing waves, roar, rhythmically, playing along with the children on the beach. This white stone beach, is Tongo. The resting land of fishermen coming home, from the sea. While the men go to the sea, the women weave fabrics at home. The weavings of the south coast have a unique pattern. The rhythmic pounding sounds of the weaving machines are heard all day long. Behind every thread weaved tightly together lies a smile and also a deep passion of keeping the tradition alive. Moving along to the mountains, where women have their own way, of keeping traditions, taking enough, pandan and palm fronds from their land. They then sundry them and finally weave them to make floor mats, or even baskets. In the weekly market, held every Thursday, 
people from the coast and from the mountains meet, exchanging their catch from the sea with weaver product and farming crops. This is the gate to Nagekio, complete with the savannah, forest, and beaches. Eager to greet you. Just like our ancestors before, we do not forget. We remember our roots. We remember where we came from. We remember who saved us. We remember who fight for us. We thanks our ancestors before to fight the invaders and we must continue their fight. Our ancestors has led us the ways of survival by gathering food from the bluest of blue, gaining the richness of the world. Craftsmanship has been passed down from generation to generation, achieving the ability to glide through the calm and rough waves nature's plentiful bounty. Nature is wealthy in many ways, for it has many surprises for us, who are willing to go the distance. Bright white sand, stone beaches, and clear calm water, are waiting for the wandering souls. The old and long relationship of our ancestor and nature goes further with the provision of domesticated cattle and herds. Furthermore, we keep strengthening our mutual bond to the generous nature surrounding us. Our land holds their role by providing endless production of salt. And in return we process the salt attentively and use our ancestors way of packaging by using wicker weavings. By doing so, we maintain a sustainable future in respect to our nature for generations to come. Hundreds of acres of productive and lively rice fields dominate the scenery of this land, where farmers work together side by side, yielding their well-earned crop throughout ever-changing seasons. Nestled in the villages are groups of iron-hearted women, maintaining the production of traditional fabric by traditional methods passed down from their mothers and their mothers. This is the land who doesn't forget. This is the land who remembers.